America. St. Mary's School Waverly Magazine 2007. It's like a yearbook. <laughs> okay, let's find my year. No. Grade 7. You guys, why does it's it so, look lame. so lame? Memories. Oh, they have, they have memories from grade 7. Okay. There's yours. I remember when I was singing at Paint the Town Red. It's like a music and food festival. And my group won the karaoke competition. The next year we won again. <laughs> By the way, I never used to miss Paint the Town Red because that was the thing. It was the thing. My daughter would show her, her artistry. She was always the at the the artist at heart. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to another episode of uh, Mom and Daughter. I am a Dr. Tsepo Maka, a.k.a. Dr. C... Doc, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I am Dr. Tsepo Maka, a.k.a. Dr. T, the mom. And I am Cabello, a.k.a. Cablo, the daughter. And what do we say? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Mom and Daughter podcast, where we grow and maintain healthy mom and daughter relationships. Okay. Oh, what are we talking about today? So last week, I think uh, there was, uh, you know, we, we touched a little bit about your school days and I thought, no, it was going to go on for too long. So we're still in the early days. We're still in the school days and uh, basically how, you know, we build this relationship to where it was, to where it is right now. And uh, just looking back uh, in the rear view mirror to see where we were. Uh, uh, that has helped us to to be where we are today. So, in fact, we started early by looking at some of the magazines. Uh, and um, apparently, I used to keep these magazines. <laughs> this is where she went to school. I used to keep these magazines. This is from 2020, her last... 2012. 2012. <laughs> eight years ago. Her last um, uh, school year. So... Uh, I hope that I still have. They used to give us this magazine. Was it every quarter or every every year? Was it every year? And I used to keep them. And I hope I still have all the twelve copies, because if I don't, then I'm in trouble. Uh, but what? Did, why did I do that? I think it's it's very important to always refer back. You know, like we're doing right now, to refer back to remember where it all began. But um, I remember grade one, mm -hmm. first day of school. Mm -hmm. I cried. I didn't. I cried, you know, because it was the beginning of the rest of her life. And this little one was so eager, like, oh, I am, you know, this is me. I'm on it, you know. And I was crying, thinking, you know, this you, you're shaping your life. This is the beginning of the rest of your life. There will be so many things that you'll be faced with. We don't know what those things will be. But, oh, this one was like, oh, man, I am ready, you know. And this was, this was like after two years of going to crash or, you know, kindergarten. And, uh, you know, where, you know, where I didn't want you to stay at home. I wanted you to interact with other children so that you can, you know, grow. But... I think really here we wanted to talk about everything that happened while you were at school. So, why were you not crying in your first day of school? So, this is how I remember it. I remember that, um, you know, kids, let me just, before I tell the story, you know, um, parents do this thing where they they run away like like they, they 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 leave the child to be distracted playing with toys or with the caregiver or whoever and then they run away and they go to the shops and they do that because children never let their parents leave they cry they want to go with them and i guess it's because you don't know when your parents are going to come back so you cry maybe that's why kids do this so i'm sure when i went to crash i probably did yeah that. i don't remember mm. but i'm sure when i went to crash when my mom dropped i me used off, to run I, I would cry because i'd be like <laughs> no why and then and then you you get used to it yeah you get used to it that okay um uh, she drops me off in the morning goes wherever 
because I don't know where she goes. And then, um, oh, well, I did because we, we used to, I, knew, I knew you were going to the hospital. So I knew, I understood that parents work. So then she'd ask me off at crash and then um, picks me up in the afternoon after I've had story time, uh, nap time. numbers, <laughs> uh, words, learning your body, nap time, <laughs> lunch. Oh, yeah, they fed you after la- nap time, yeah. You have lunch, then you have nap time, then your parents come pick you up. It's a great way to live life. <laughs> so, after many years of attending crash, I was very experienced. So I wasn't going to do that thing where you cry <laughs> when your parent uh, drops you off. Because why? I'm a big child now, okay? I understand that she's coming back. So, when grade one came along, <laughs> I was ready. I was like, been going to crash for what, two years? <laughs> I have been going to crash for two years, okay? I have experience. I don't know about the rest of you children, but I have experience. So, when my mom was crying, I was like, why is she crying? I'm coming back. <laughs> In actual fact, that's what she said. She said, I am coming back. You know, I'm coming back. So why are you crying? Like, oh, I'm sure she did hear me one day saying, I am coming back. So then it was her time to say, or her turn to say, I'm coming back. But, you know, really, you know, there, I think there has been so many of those moments that uh, even, even maybe before we get to school, I'm trying to think something that happened while you were at crash. Mm-hmm. Yeah, where uh, I would, you know, the crash that you were going to, I used to drop you off. Yeah. And then uh, fetch you. Yeah, or, or the helper, or the helper maybe would will fetch you. me yeah. and so, walk. So when it was time to go to school, she said, why aren't you taking me to a school where I walk? Yeah. You know, I didn't want to you know you don't have to drive and i'm thinking what if it rains or you yeah, know i was trying hard. to be a helpful little six-year-old okay <laughs> i was trying to be you know we don't have to drive we can just i can just walk from her so i was thinking about convenience no know? so i said no i found this uh school and this is where you're going but the the, the thing about the school that i took it was that some of the friends that she had at crash were going there so she oh yeah she didn't it's, you know she didn't go there alone as a stranger she had some people with you know so i insisted that we're going to take you to a school where we drive because it's a good school it the the best thing i could have done for my daughter was take her to st mary's lord jesus thank you i really appreciate the opportunity to be able to take my daughter there because we it was 12 kilometers away from home but uh, more than that excuse me she i think we had an email in grade one was it grade one or probably around about i mean that school was amazing she had an email address in grade one i graduated as a doctor i couldn't even use computers <laughs> you, know, but you she... said that people would take a mouse <laughs> and like cover it on the screen when they were like click what you're looking you for <laughs> but she she was so privileged and thank god she went to that that school but um what i remember about those days is that um and maybe she said this maybe in grade three or four mm-hmm. where she said to me mommy i don't want you to be a remote controlled mom did yeah. i say that yeah because you have a helper you have a driver and you have a you have a, a, a PA. I don't want you to just, you know, click a button and things happen. I, w- I want you to be a real mom. And you know that... Did I say that? Yeah, I did. How that old was I? 10. You were very young, you know, very, very young. I mean, and it, it touched me, you know, because I can't remember. Wow. When, when did... Uh, I think Mr. Ma... ma, ma he came maybe like 2006 or 2005? Yeah, 2005. Yeah, so you were in grade? Grade five. five. Yeah, somewhere there. And uh, yeah, wow. you can't... Yes, that was the time for Vanessa and Mr... Uh, uh, oh, that means I was Mahamba. between the age of 10 and 11. Yeah. And she wow. says, don't be a, a remote control mom. And so I decided, you know what? I am going to be... I know I have 
very, very tight working hours. But I'll make it a point that I take you to school every morning. And then Mr. Mahamba could pick you up in the afternoon, right? And uh, But the, the painful thing about it is that we used to start at 7 in the morning. And I would have to drop you off at half past 6 with a security guard at the school. That was painful. But you know, because I had to go and anesthetize people and cutting time was 7. I had to leave you at court. And you know, Lord, those security guards that didn't have evil thoughts, those security guards that had such great hearts. Remember like that security guard that we saw recently that has been there for years. Those people he was there like from the daughter, 80s. You know. Maybe that's why he remembered me. Yeah, because I used to drop you off so early in the morning, you know, and, and go and, and uh, make sure that I could be at work early. You know, these so, are such faint memories. Now. Yeah, you know, and um, but what I was teaching my daughter then was one. Sometimes we have to sacrifice and do the things that uh, we're not comfortable with, but then at the same time, I was teaching you time so that you're not. School started at half past seven, so you were always there on early time, yeah. before. You were always on time, and so that I could also be on time. So that was that. That was a painful thing to do, but. It had to be done for those years so that I could be able to um, juggle my time uh, uh, with my with my daughter. What are the other things wow. that you remember that we used to do as mom and daughter at school? Um, sorry, I'm just taking that in because I don't remember <laughs> saying that. <laughs> it was not mean. It was a, a child thing to say. Yeah, but it it uh, I'm like before we just go into the memories. I'm just wondering. What did I see or what did I learn or how did I deduce that statement? <laughs> Children say the darnest things. things. Sure. I'm telling you. But, I didn't know I but said it that hit home. home. It hit home. It really yeah. did. Uh, I mean, school was up and down for me because I don't think I was telling my mom the other day. I don't think I liked school. Um, <laughs> Thank God which she's is telling weird. me now. weird. And I'm, like, I'm only processing it now. Maybe after 10 years from now, I'll realize, no, it was not that I didn't like school. It was something else. But I don't think I liked school. Not that I didn't enjoy going to the school that I went to, because I did. And I really liked my teachers. And the days were fun. I think maybe like just this concept of like sitting in a classroom <laughs> and like somebody talks for 45 minutes and then you have to go home and do homework. Maybe I didn't like that. I don't know. Or maybe it was boring. I don't know. You know. Um. So like school was like up and down. I think primary school though was not like high school where everything is very serious. I think yeah. primary school was very fun. Mm -hmm. And um. I was like very enthusiastic about mm -hmm. everything, mm -hmm. you know. And also the school that I went to gave children a lot of opportunities to try different things, you know. There was a time in grade three where we all had to learn a music instrument musical instrument and we would rotate. I can't remember how the rotations worked, but it was like at one point one group was learning the clarinet and then at another point you switched and you were learning the violin and then another point you switched and you were learning the piano or whatever. And I guess they were just doing that to make sure that you get exposed to many different things. It was also with sports, you know, we had summer sports and winter sports. You Privileged know. children. No, yeah, it was it was a beautiful <laughs> place to go to school. So maybe that's also, um, maybe when I was younger, maybe that's also what made school interesting is mm. there were just all these things, you know, it was... If it wasn't science, it was art. If it wasn't art, it was community service. If it wasn't community service, it was music and whatever. So there were a lot of things going on. Um, I do remember that my mom used to come to everything. And um, we were looking through these yearbooks, <laughs> the yearbook from 2007 now. And we got to the sports okay. section and I said, that you will not find me in this section of the magazine because I was not very sporty but even when I'm in the low ranking team D team or C team or whatever and I like come last <laughs> in a swimming match or whatever my mom would be there cheering um, and you know even when you you know you're not the strongest swimmer it does make you want to swim 
Look, just to see my little Nuna in that swimsuit with the with the the cap, the cap and the beginning with all the kids, and she looks so cute, and she knew that her mother was watching. She was going to outperform everybody. I was going to make sure that I was there that she gives it her best. So really, I will be the girl. My girl. And, uh, you know, sometimes second last, you know, I mean, uh, she really did not take well to sports. She didn't mm-hmm. like running. She didn't like, okay, swimming. She, because she still swims now. She enjoyed swimming. Um uh, she played a bit of netball, you know, she played hockey. Um, I wanted her to play piano, uh, but that did not stick. Uh, but I was there because I wanted to encourage, I wanted to know that somebody was there, you know, you, I had your back at all times, that whether you were making it or not, I was there for you. Mm-hmm. But also more importantly, because I the mothers were all busy, you know, the mm-hmm. parents of the kids at that school were always busy. So, I would make sure that I'm there not only for my girl, but for all the other children, you know, and so that they, they also know oh, there's a familiar face, you know, so that yeah. they encourage. So I'll be there for all the kids, you know, for all of Cabello's friends, Zandile, Lumelo, you know, all the kids so that they know that, you know, uh, Auntie Seppo will be there for them. And I realized that kids, it's very important to support your kids in everything that they do. You know, St. Mary's was busy. I mean, even on a Saturday, like I, Lord Jesus knows how I managed raising my daughter and being able to cope with St. Mary's. There was just so many things. Saturdays were, if it was not paint the town red, if it was not, you know, uh, something, old girls night or whatever, somebody talking or some sports event, it was a birthday party of a friend that they needed to go to. And, she, you know, they went to everybody's birthday party. So it was important for me to support her so that she knows that her mother is always there. And that, you know, and, and you know, I know sometimes it was a distraction, like, for instance, during a play, you know, <laughs> uh, in the young grade one to grade No, but four. I was not one of those children. You know, when, okay. they see, when they see their mothers and then they forget <laughs> the line. The line. No, the, they I was a professional, okay? I was not one of those kids. The teachers were like, they'd, and they tell you this from grade one. You're like six. The teachers are like, when you see your mom in the audience, don't wave. Because the they're going to wave at you, don't wave. And I remember saying, sitting i'm like maybe in grade three or something i'm sitting on stage bright and happy ready to perform and there's my mom and you get excited because you're like yay there she is but then you're like they said don't wave so don't wave and you're like mom stop waving i'm not gonna wave back you know i should have just waved doesn't matter but i was very (laughs) professional okay i would in every play every marimba i used to play the marimbas with my friends jazz band choir whatever r&b band whatever i was very professional yeah so so some kids would really get distracted (laughs) and also you know i think for us, the waving was so that the kids can know that we are there, so mm-hmm. that they don't think, oh, my mom didn't come to this mm-hmm. thing of mine, you know. So we usually waved so that they realize. But I think on our side, we didn't do some <laughs> kids. <laughs> just justice, you know. Um, so, so, I mean, I think when she says she didn't like school, school, I think the school had a lot of work. There was a lot of work. It was, for me, St. Mary's, I used to call it project management. It was a lot of work. You had to maneuver a whole lot of things to make sure that everything i mean just everything was just so much you know um information you know if they had to go to a camp you know they would send things you have to make sure everything is that if they've done homework you have to sign it afterwards they'd give them diaries it it was just so intense and uh I guess the being involved in my daughter's life was because that school was also so involved. So, and also when you want the best for your kid or also you want your kid to to not be left behind, you have to be involved, you know. So I didn't go to a school like that. I mean, I just did what I needed to do at school. Thank God I did well at school. But, you know, our kids needed us to be there to make sure that everything was always done on time. The homework was done. It was submitted on time. Because otherwise you're going to get an email Oh, I didn't get that homework. Oh, please, she didn't bring this book. Oh, you know, so it was really intense, especially the very first seven years. But uh, what I did as a mom for my daughter then was 
make sure that I was there to support all her activities, make sure that uh, she was accountable in everything that she needed to do. Her schoolwork was done on time. And, uh, oh, you know, I remember this. <clears throat> okay, you know, obviously we, we make lunch boxes for your kids. You know, you always have to make lunch box. And then by God's grace, I had a helper who would make a lunch box of for my daughter all the time. But when mommy made the lunch box, you know, like like I said in the previous episode, I had to have my signature on everything that I did for my daughter. So when I made a lunch box for you, it would always be like, even the way I cut the bread, you know, <laughs> it would be cut in such a way that she knows it is mommy and I will put a special something in it, maybe even write a little note with a little heart or something. Like, Cabello knew if it was a lunchbox from the helper and if it was from mommy. Mommy's lunchbox were very, 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 very different. Mommy put mommy's love in it. I think that is how I even there built the connection with my daughter. Mm -hmm. Do you remember your lunchbox? I do. Um, my lunchboxes were always uh, balanced. So, and we always used to alternate. So it was, it was, it was, um, there was always water and there was always some kind of juice. There was a, uh, in school we had a first break and a second break. There was always a light meal for the first break and then like the, a proper meal for lunch for the second break. And then there was, cause we, we used to have so many after school activities. So um, then there'd be like a snack for after school, which if you don't plan your lunch right <laughs> and you eat it at second break, you're doomed. Cause then you don't have food after school. <laughs> So but I never my, gave any money during the week. Yeah, so my mom used to balance my, my meals, you know, it would be, uh, there was always water, there was always some kind of juice or alternative fun drink. Um, there was a fruit, there were always two two fruits, I think, in lunch, because one was for first and one was for second break. And then if there were two meals in the lunchbox, it would be like, maybe there's a sandwich and then there's like um, maybe yesterday's supper, you know, um, rice and chicken or something, mm. or or spaghetti and mince or something, or creme de la creme Woolworths warming <laughs> up food specifically macaroni, macaroni and, and cheese. cheese. This child loved I really cheese. loved Woolworths macaroni and cheese. It was the bomb duty, and you and I could tell I could tell when the sandwich was my mom's because the sandwich, like even if it's just a plain sandwich. Um, with poloni, you know, you can tell that it's my mom because then she would put like lettuce and tomatoes. She would make it like gourmet. Um, whereas maybe the helper, maybe that day she was like, <laughs> we just need to get this done quickly. Maybe it's just like tuna mm. and just tuna, mm. no mayo. You can tell, so spoiled. Um, but yeah, you know, and then sometimes, and then in the lunchbox they'd be like dairy. And the dairy would alternate, so it would maybe be like yogurt or like a yogurt drink or on special days, custard. <laughs> I think that's yeah. all I was waiting for. Yeah. I was waiting to you know, feed this little I mean, the, the oh. one thing I did used to do with my friends, though, this is not really mom and daughter, is my friends would swap yogurts. So if <laughs> I had, if I had strawberry... And my friend Azandile, she would have my mixed fruit. Then we would swap. So she would take the <laughs> strawberry yogurt and I would take the mixed fruit. No, but and I, I was never told that. We used to do that all the time. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Friendships. Friendships. <laughs> we used to do that all the time. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So, yeah, but anyway, I could. And, and you know, as, as we got older, my mom's skills, obviously, all cooking skills also just really improved. So the lunchbox room lunch boxes really got to be, I mean you were always good at cooking but I'm saying they they always just got like fancier and fancier yeah. and then eventually when I got to high school I was making my own lunch obviously yeah um and so then I would always try to emulate the the meals that my mom would pack for me yeah but yeah it was it was always special when you, you eat lunch and you get a little note from your mom yeah. and you're like oh I feel so loved you know um and then you know the note is like stapled to like a mini chocolate because <laughs> obviously you can't have too much sugar when you're you when you're little no um but yeah so thank you mom for all the great lunch boxes oh you're welcome it was it, it was a pleasure to make them what was not a pleasure was when she would leave her blazer at home and i would be at work 
And then I would be told she left her place. Oh, she would have left that lunchbox at home. And I'd be like, Lord, you know. So in between cases, you know, you are in theater. I mean, my life was hectic. You are in theater and then you have to say, okay, uh, can we, I just need to go home, quickly get this and then come back. That was my, that's what you used to do to me, you know. So, And sometimes you used to, you know, it happened three times in a week, you know, where she forgot her blazer or her lunchbox. That's why, I had, to, bag. That's why I had to get Mr. Makam. I couldn't handle it anymore because I realized now my job now was going to be in trouble. So I had to make sure, you know, oh, my, oh sports bag, a top bag shoe they forgot. So, but I think even then, uh, my uncle used to say, I hope you don't spoil this little one. Uh, but even then, I guess, I, you know, kids, they don't want to feel left out. They don't want to. So it was just always to make sure that she doesn't feel left out or feel the odd one out. And that's why I would always do those things. So, hey, junior school was a lot of hard work. But even even if that was the case, I had to make sure that, you know, you impart the skills. I remember when she was little, I used to, I used to teach her how to use a fork and knife to eat on the table. And she'd hold it like this, you know. <laughs> she'd hold, and the, the fork was so big. I mean, the other day we were looking at the fork. She said, oh, they used to be so, mama, these forks are long. <laughs> and, you know, so, because I wanted to teach her a table uh, etiquette, how to dine, fine dining, you know, how to use a napkin. As, you know, I had to teach her all those things because I, re- I knew that one day, uh, in her in the future, she would have to wine and dine with people, you know, and so I needed to make sure. So we did that very early on, um, uh, and for you know for special occasions. Once she was trained at home, I would take her to a restaurant, and for her birthdays, and you would see the little, little one using fucking <laughs> and the toasts uh, <laughs> flies out, off the plate. You're know, flying off the plate, and like okay, I still have a lot of work to do, <laughs> but uh, those were the fun moments, you know. Um, and I, I really enjoyed St. Mary's in that in as much as it was a lot of work, there was a lot of things that we could do together. And even then I realized that for me spending time with my daughter doing what she, she liked to do, which was schooling and school activities. I was teaching, I was, I was bonding with her. Remember we didn't bond during the breastfeeding, but this was another way of, of bonding with my daughter. Um, you also used to tell me that you read somewhere that um, people only spend a certain amount of time with their kids. Yeah. So you made sure that when we were driving back home from school, you would yeah. ask me about you know school activities. And yes. Everything. Yes. So so I I read a book somewhere where it says people spend maximum fifteen minutes with their kids every day, and I thought, Lord, there's twenty four hours that people spend fifteen minutes. No. So in the morning, it was a little bit too rushed, and sometimes we were half asleep. In the afternoon, if Mahamba was not picking you up and I had to pick you up, I, you know, I would ask you about your day and you would tell, tell me. I mean, even to this day, every morning is, how did you sleep? You know, how was your day? I mean, even to this day, it started then, you know. To you know, be to find out how I was. Yeah, you know, today so and so did this to me. Oh, so and so, mommy, today I lost this and this. Oh, mommy, today I could, you know, today Mrs. So and so, you know. So I used to hear all the stories about all the teachers and Mrs. I don't even want to name them, but you know, it was a way of connecting with my daughter to make her understand that I am, you know, I am there with you. Um, you know, I wasn't invited to so and so's party. <laughs> you know, I feel sad, and I'll be. Okay, it's okay. You you know you are not friends with any everybody, but you know. So, so I think even at school there were some lessons learned, uh, and there were some teaching moments. And um, I think the one thing that my daughter taught me during those times was to be patient. You have to learn to be very patient with all those ups and downs that I had to do. You, uh, I had to learn to to be there for my for my child. You know, um, uh, taught me that. Your work comes second, third. God first, my daughter, my work. That my work comes third to, 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 to in that order uh, and to prioritize. And also, uh, during the school days, uh, what else did I, 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 I learn? That teachers are important, but parents are important too because children listen to their teachers while they're there, but uh, you still have your part, you know, uh, to make sure that your kids are 
Totten and I pray. Anything else you want to say before we say bye-bye? Mm, I was thinking of bringing up the story when you forgot me oh, Lord. at school, but then I thought <laughs> we can dedicate another episode to that. <laughs> The one time my mom forgot to fetch me from school. So tune in next time. <laughs> we'll say that for another day. <laughs> I forgot my daughter. <laughs> yes, like she said, that is an episode for another day. So this is Dr. T, the mom. And Cablo, the daughter. Till next time. Bye bye. bye. Uh-huh. Oh, it was that year where your hair looked so terrible. Uh, it bothers you. Doesn't bother me. So, you know, I, because you know, I didn't. I didn't have time to do hair for the for the optics. You know, I asked her. I was like, "Do you still have these magazines?" And she was like, "I don't know. I there probably was, threw them away." And so I was many. like. <laughs>